talking today to Emma Kay from Boza. What is Boza, Emma? Boza is uh, it's a startup. We've been in the market for a year, and we focus very specifically um, on the so-called bottom end of the pyramid. And I use that word very lightly. So if we look at what's happening in the world of content, and it seems to be exploding in the last year with the likes of Iraqo, Rocking, who've been amazing in the world of content, is that for us there's a massive opportunity in social impact, and that for us is the opportunity on how do we give access to this huge social and cultural currency within an African environment to individuals. And essentially Boza is a platform to enable self-expression within any township environment within an African and converted into kind of practical terms, that means people making their own films, people making their own music, their own poetry, and so on and so forth. So, That's right. give me some examples of that. Um, so, essentially, with my uh, over my career, I've worked extensively in the creative industry, and been very frustrated in understanding this point of access. Of you know, an individual has to have access to networks or contacts or broadcasters. So, in a real life example, within a township, if you are a musician, for instance, inevitably your your kind of circle of exposure is often your community or you have a gig in a tavern, but it's very difficult to get beyond that. It's quite it's limited and quite local. Very, absolutely. So how do I expand my, my fan base? How do I even start looking at getting my CDs out, pressing my CDs? How do I look at revenue? So we're looking at that those particular niche markets as opposed to the big stars, the, the big Nollywood stars, the big Bollywood stars. We're looking at the next generation of stars. How do we give those people access through a mobile platform? And you were giving the example um, earlier of the poetry uh, yeah. readers. So Give us that stat because it's it's kind of interesting. It's a lot of people. Yeah. So it's been. It's, as I say, we're in startup mode. So we've yeah. only been in the market for six months, and during that time, we've really, really got to understand our market. So inevitably, most people feel that music is the the kind of touch point mm. on mobile because it's easy. It's it, people are educated around it. And we saw a very interesting swing, mm. as it wasn't music, it was poetry. Poetry is probably our most successful, um, was our most successful uh, category or genre. Mm. Um, we have, at the moment, with absolutely no advertising, we have 20,000 active viewers, readers a month. We get over 2,500 people a month, a week, sending us poetry, mm. and really good quality poetry. Sometimes it's phonetically written, as in the text language, but the poetry itself is, is is amazing and very compelling. It talks about social issues, talks about politics, talks about love. It's a very interesting mouthpiece that we're mm. starting to see evolve. And quite a rich genre in that very, sense. Very, it's extraordinary. And a very big following. And in the rest of Africa, where are you working and what have been the, the, the high points there in the last year? I'm glad you brought that up because we're, we are very clear and not being seen as a South African company, even though we, we are here. Within the company itself, we kind of seem to be the United Nations. We have uh, just within our, our team a varied group of team members. So we are really looking at a pan-African approach. And we're focusing on Nigeria and Kenya, and we work very much on the ground, from the ground up. So we have partners that we work with uh, in both countries, and we're obviously looking at you know, expanding into other, mm. into other countries, Tanzania, Ghana, Zimbabwe. So we work really from the ground up with partners mm. so that we can ensure that we understand the market because mm. I feel very strongly that Africa is not homogenous mm. and there's a, ten, there's a tendency to think Africa is just this one continent whereas that very specific elements about each country which we have to pay attention to just on a structural perspective mm. whether it's payment whether it's about operators and then just from a anthropological perspective it's how do people consume what are their behaviours where do they live how do mm. they engage with one another, what's their community, and we're very cognizant of those differences and make sure that our app brings those into the fold in terms of our development as well as our execution and implementation. You mentioned the app there, very briefly describe technically how this is delivered and on, in, in what ways. Yeah, so it was one of our first pivots. We were looking at a classic Moby site, mm. because obviously it's more ubiquitous, and we realized that our users really wanted a sense of ownership, so we moved into application which has its own inherent problems because you have to now develop for every operating system. So that's been one of our big learnings. And um, we do, it's an application and we are very feature phone specific. Mm. So we're J2ME, Java, Symbian. We are of course on Android and Blackberry, but we're optimized for the feature phones, mm. which it also includes the Blackberry 8520, which falls into the feature phone environment. Mm. Emma, thanks for talking to me today. Such a pleasure, thank you.